Chris Rostad, President and CEO of PurePoint Uranium Group. We are an exploration company operating out of northern Saskatchewan in the Athabasca Basin. And we're here today with Matt to talk about a very exciting transaction that we've just uh, just completed that I think is, uh, for us, it's fairly transformational. And I think it's setting us up properly for uh, this particular market. Um, good to see you, Chris. And yeah, what a, what a super deal. Um, I mean, quality deal with ISO Energy, no less. Um, so, well, why don't you give us the outline of the, the deal structure and we'll maybe uh, yeah, sure. probe so, a little bit further. What we've done, uh, ISO and ourselves, is uh, we have taken a package of about 10 projects that we each own, and we are combining them into a joint venture, um, a 50-50 joint venture when the smoke clears, uh, to, to advance those exploration projects moving forward. Uh, we are the... Uh, we are going to be the operator of this project moving forward until such time as we uh, identify a resource, a resource estimate, and then uh, ISO will be there to pick up the baton and march it forward into development. Um, on top of that, we're using this as, a, uh, uh, as an appropriate time to, to uh, I guess, better position our, our cap structure. So we're going to be doing a 10 to 1 consolidation. And we are also doing a $2 million uh, financing, $1 million of which is being picked up by ISO Energy. So uh, I think when the smoke clears, they will hold about uh, 12% of PurePoint, which makes it a very meaningful uh, investment for them. And, uh, and, and for us, it, it really uh, it turns us into a, a far more significant exploration focused uh, entity right okay well let's come back to the money bit in, in a second i want to talk about the what they've actually picked up so about these 10 projects that they've got is this a case of sort of non-core for you or how do you view them and how do they view them well and this is this is what's exciting about this one in particular because we are we're, we're kind of turning the model around that we that we see uh evolving in in saskatchewan these are our best projects um, and, uh, okay. and when this deal is done, or as this now deal, deal is now done, uh, it, it means that most of our projects, the majority of our projects, are being operated under joint venture. Um, and they, these projects represent our best projects, not our worst projects, not the ones that, that, that we uh, want to sell off, but the, you know, the ones that we truly see needing significant advancement. Because as we've talked about in the past, moving these projects along takes a lot of capital. And uh, we, we uh, see this as an opportunity to, to uh, have access to the capital needed uh, by, by partnering up with, with significant companies as well, companies with, with solid balance sheets and uh, who are very focused on, on requiring that next deposit, that next resource for, for them to, uh, to move into, uh, into production. Okay, well, let's talk about that business model. Like, we, I know we've talked about it in the past, but with people looking at this today, listening to this today, reading about it, you perhaps don't quite understand why you kind of give away the good stuff. Why not advance those yourself? So let's kind of run through the, the theory. Okay. Well, you know, we've we've talked about this in the past in that in that it the, the exploration model is is very expensive. And even in Saskatchewan, where we see uh, where we see deposits being identified, you know, over and over again over over the years, um, it's still very expensive. And we've seen where, in fact, you know, if you look at the last six uh, discoveries. There were hundreds of millions of dollars spent before that first discovery hole, let alone moving it into uh, some sort of a resource estimate. So it does require a lot of cash. And, you know, the markets this time around, unlike, unlike what we saw in 2000, uh, where you couldn't stop the money from coming in the door, um, you know, from the exploration side, we haven't seen that, uh, you know, that, that investment coming into exploration um, in tandem with, with the rise in uranium prices. So... We really need to find a way to to position our best properties uh, in a way that they could continue to be financed in a substantial way, um, and and move them into into something real. And I think by partnering as we have now in the past and now under this as well with with companies with solid balance sheets with you know production assets who are developing assets, um, it's uh, it, it it gives us access to that sort of capital. Uh, to move it forward. Plus, it also in a market that's you know very, very cluttered with, with a lot of exploration companies trying to move projects along. We now have validation for those projects that are uh, that that these are truly prospective properties, um, because uh, 
because we see very significant companies standing behind them financially. Okay, so what do what these 10 projects look like? I mean, who's putting in what? And then how did, what money's being allocated to it, if you don't mind? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a screen. I'm going to share a screen. So uh, these, what you see in orange are our properties. These are, this is the Athabasca Basin. Um, the major mine trend we see where all of the big mines, MacArthur River, Cigar Lake, Rough Rider, et cetera, up, up this uh, corridor here. And, and what's happening is this, up, this package, this uh, at the top here, uh, it represents those projects that we're, we're now combining and putting together. So it, it, includes, um, um, it includes our Turner Lake, our Red Willow, uh, and then on the uh, on the uh, ISO Energy side, it's their Geiger property, it's Edge, it's Full Moon, Collins Bay, and uh, and a handful of, of uh, smaller properties to the south, where they they've also done quite a bit of work. So we're looking at we're looking at properties here that that you know collectively between the two companies, um, we've already spent tens of millions of dollars uh, because it is it is a large package of property, and now we've done extensive geophysics, extensive you know first pass drilling. And, you know, and we, we see this as a, as a major district. I'm going to show you one more slide, actually, that the kind of focuses on our initial focus where we're going to be is over right near the hurricane zone. So this, uh, um, the, the La Rock corridor, this trend that rides right up uh, through a number of major showings uh, into their hurricane deposit and then continues off to the, to the north of, of Turner Lake. Uh, actually wraps around through Turner Lake and comes up through the bottom into their Geiger property where there's been a number of showings as well. So um, this will probably be some of our, our initial focus uh, going into this. But now it puts all of these properties together and it puts them in a way where we've got some elbow room. We can follow these uh, these conductors and these targets uh, in, a, in a broader sense. And uh, and it's, it's, it's quite exciting because we're working with a lot of information. We've had, uh, you know, we announced that we had um, a company called Condor going through all of the historic Turner Lake data that we had and putting together new interpretations and new new targeting. And uh, at the same time, ISO has been doing the same thing uh, with their Geiger property and, and the surrounding property. So now we're going to be able to knit all of that data together. And it, it gives you a very comprehensive view of, of exactly what's going on down there. And you start comparing things. You know, we have access to look at you know, we do have access to look at the the, the hurricane uh, data and the and the the information they have next door because we you know we want to see how this stuff was deposited, where it was deposited, what sort of geological trends uh, that we should be following up on. Um, so it's uh, you know by putting all of this property together, it is it's really giving us a uh, you know a, a you know a far deeper and broader look at that, that region. Okay, so look, so I want to be really clear on the, on the detail here. So, um, okay, shared data to, to um, I guess, look at how you, you know, create value for the district rather than individual projects, right? So you're putting into Turner Lake and Red Well, um, they already have, you know, Geico, um, Thorn, Thorn Burn, et cetera, uh, on this. You talked about management fee. Are, are you going to take over the, the management of all all ten projects, or are you just going to focus on so, all ten? Yeah. Okay. What were, what were they doing before then? If if I may ask. I'm sorry. Were they doing anything? Were they already doing? Yes. As a matter of fact, we're starting. I mean, we're 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 fortunate because they they have um, next step planning done for all of those properties, as do we on our side, and so we're now but was combining that on a desktop basis. On a desktop. Was anything basis. actually happening on the ground with oh, any yes. of their projects? I mean, projects? They, have, they have been doing geophysics. They have been doing some initial uh, drilling on some of those properties. Um, right. So we're, we're starting with, with you know, uh, they were advancing those properties. What it is doing, because right now I, know, I can tell you their, their exploration team is being run off their feet because they're, you know, they're not only down in the States, but now they're looking back at their Quebec properties. They've got other properties that they're following up around the hurricane zone. This also helps kind of lighten their load as well, and 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 bring a different focus to those properties. Again, just to be clear, so they, they've got a team who've been doing a lot of uh, groundwork, surface work. Um, you've obviously got a, a, an exploration team as well. Are they coming together? Are you taking over management of it? I mean, how's it work? We will we we will take over complete management of all of those properties um, uh, from an exploration standpoint. That's now our job. Okay. Uh, we do right. all that. How's that financed? How's that financed? It's financed 50-50. Okay. 
and, and we do earn a management fee. Right. Now, now, if and when there is a, a resource identified somewhere on that property, we will we will kind of put a put a boundary around that that uh, that deposit, and they take over operatorship and they earn a management fee. But they will then start moving that piece of the property forward. We'll continue on the exploration side looking for more. So it, it you know, we are the exploration team. Okay. On these so problems. you make one discovery, you hand it over, or is it a case of actually there may be more discoveries to make, we'll hang on to this for a bit longer. I mean, how's it work? So the um uh well, because the property is so large now, I mean it, it is it is massive. Um the uh it, it's it's not unspeakable that that there may be more than one deposit sitting on it. So uh, and, and so if we do find and focus in on something and find it, that doesn't mean that we stop exploring the, the area or the property. So we, we kind of wind up with two operators at the same time doing completely different functions. Okay. Uh, so we, we would actually bound it. We would, we would hive off that, that, that project and collectively decide what we want to do with it moving forward. But financially we're in this 50, 50. Okay. So we are, we are responsible for putting forward the program, uh, for setting the budget. Um, there are, there are governors around that budget and, uh, and, and then once it's approved, we, we execute. Okay. So given it's 50, 50, they have got a ton of cash. They've got access to more cash if they need it. They're very acquisitive at the moment. So I guess they have slightly different, um, priorities in terms of the, the evolvement of the word, let's make it a word of their business. Um, in terms of like gr growing the scale and, and opportunity beyond the grand stuff um, for you, it, it's going to be a bit more restraint on your on your balance sheet and, and available cash. So it, again, how do you kind of keep up with with them? Well, for instance, I mean, actually, it's not as much as one would think. So if we look at um, and again, all of our projects are right now in a planning stage. So we don't have budget set, but. It's not inconceivable that we could be managing nine to ten million dollars worth of field work next year. Of that nine to ten million dollars, we are providing less than three million, maybe two and a half million. That's our. Oh, why, that's, why, why is that? Just for people who don't, don't understand what first necessity means. Well, again, because we've got we've got uh, Hook Lake, of which we provide twenty one percent. We've got uh, the Foran earn in that they're they're uh, developing right beside their mine. Um, which we have, which they are contributing 100% of. We've got Smart Lake, which we're going to be drilling in the in the winter, uh, which uh, we have a 27% stake in. We've got this one with it, which is 50/50. So when you start working all that out in terms of, and then we've got our own 100% owned properties that we will still might be doing some more work on. So you know, all of that combined, um, we've we've got an organization that is set up to do big time exploration right across the basin. But it's only costing us out of pocket after management fees come back in, like I say, less than $3 million, which is less than we've been spending over the last few years. Right. On our own. Okay. So, if, so that comes uh, back to this model as to you know, how, how you finance these things. It, right. but, but, so we will so, continue. Was, was just, I mean, you know, how do we find it? How do we, raise, how do we find that $3 million, that $4 million? I mean, that's, that's money that we will have to raise. So we will right. more than likely be doing uh, well, we will for sure. We want to be doing flow through and probably charity flow through, which which gives us a significant premium on our on our market price. And and one of the aspects of, of the two million that we're raising right now is to make sure that the million there's a million going to ISO, but that other million is going into strong hands and and hands that will be be able to perform kind of the back end of a charity flow through deal or who will be there to support the stock. Uh, moving forward, and make sure that we're not we're not we're not out there doing down rounds and things like that. Right. As, before I kind of continue along that financial thing again, just, just again, be, be re really really clear. I see what's in it for you based on the business model. Why would I so choose your projects over all the other Arthur Basket projects out there? Is it a case of because you're in and around their existing other exploration assets? That's that's what you yeah. said. Is that right? Well, there's a few things okay. that this does for them. I mean, you know, they are they are very clearly positioning positioned as a development company, right? They have got some some projects they're moving forward in that in that sense. These are exploration projects that don't get a lot of airtime. That in fact, um, you know, if they if they all lapse tomorrow, you probably wouldn't see their share price even shudder. But but by rolling them out in this fashion and shining a light on them, uh, we're now we're now better. The market's better to able to understand. 
um, the value of those assets and uh, and invest them as exploration assets. Um, so so that's part of this 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 uh, this reasoning. The other thing is because they fit together so well. I mean that was really what started the conversation is is when we actually looked at a map and realized that we were actually reassembling what used to be one of the predecessors of Cameco was their Don Lake project. They had this massive project up there that eventually got uh, carved up and doled out and handed off and whatever. And, and we've been able to literally reassemble uh, a major district that has, that over time has gotten fractured so badly that it's actually hard to explore. So by putting it together, you know, we've, we've, we've created a, a, like I say, a district scale project um, with, with significant, uh, data and, and work done on to date. And, uh, and it, it just made more sense to them. Okay. And you, you, there's always with these things, um, in fact, let's talk about that. So when, when did the conversation actually start? Well, it was, it was probably last March. I think Phil and I were uh, well, I was just chatting about all March 2024. And, and, right? what it was, and what it was, I'll tell you what it was, was that, was that, um, uh, Daryl Clark, who's their, uh, executive VP of exploration, desperately wanted to see what we had going on at Turner Lake because he knew that that trend, that La Rock trend that, that uh, hosts the hurricane deposit just kept going on to our project and wrapping around. So the, the initial conversation is what are you doing with that Turner Lake property and, and you know, how do we get involved here? And it, it kind of evolved into what it's evolved into. It took a number of months to kind of evolve into that, but it was like, holy cow, we can actually put together a fairly a sizable district here and do some, you know, do some real, uh, you know, do some real exploration on this stuff and, and, and take this the last mile, um, from a discovery standpoint. So okay. that was, that was back in, uh, March. Like I said, we started that. I think we had the terms somewhat set up by June and it's, it's actually taken us three or four months to paper this thing because it's, as I've, you know, we've talked about in the past, these joint ventures are difficult to paper because you're 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 setting up a you're relationship. You're trying to get paper every eventuality. Yes, and, I, I mean I've we're been talking, on that side of the it, table. Yeah, we're 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 sorting out who's how we're going to finance the mine. Um, yeah. you know, who's going to who's going to buy the product at the end of the day and at what price? Um, yeah, like there's there's you you really have to look forward on these things. And what it's done to us, and I almost have to apologize to our investors who have been sending me hate mail because we've been you know, doing nothing apparently for the last number of months, it's because we've, yeah. we've been in a blackout yeah. situation, uh, on a transaction we had hoped would have been out, you know, a month or so ago, but these things just take the time they take. They do. They do. They do. And, um, you, you've ruined their day. <laughs> naughty of you. Um, <laughs> let's, let's look at the kind of front end of, of, of that, because, you know, the initially I said, I've got a 60%, you've got 40% interest and yeah. those various calls. And no, I didn't mention that it. aspect of it. No, no, it's it's always an awful, awful detail. But um, whatever those calls and puts are, I, I kind of don't mind. I think the important thing that I think I, I would like to understand is how much are they obliged to invest into this? Because obviously, with all of these things, people can walk away at, at, at any point, right? But what are they obliged to put in? What's what's it mean to you? And why I'm asking this? Just a very important question. Why I'm asking this is when I see companies with this this sort of business model that you have, whether it be uranium or gold or, or whatever is people find it very hard to value the company and what it means to a company like yours, right? Because not quite sure about the bells and whistles that have been attached. So how would you describe the sort of front end of this? You know, the, the 60, 40 and the call and the put and the things that you'll see in the, in the, in the, in the terms were really a way we knew that we had to give, we knew that, uh, ISO had to walk away with a meaningful relationship with, with PurePoint. Um, and so that was part of the mechanics that we did to, to make sure that they, they had value and received value in what we were doing on a roll, rolling forward basis. One of the challenges we typically run into when we're looking at these joint ventures is the, the biggest danger a junior has with a, with a, with a larger company is that they might park one of your best projects for, you know, they might just say there's no, well, no you, you know money for from, from few years. I saw, I saw from Cameco and. And um, are on our days, right? Yeah. We've had years where it's been it's been lean, and we have no yeah. control over that necessarily. the The other side of it is you don't want to be in a situation where they can just they can they can throw forward a uh, a budget that they know you can't meet, and and therefore just grind you down uh, from an ownership perspective. What is interesting in this, and it's interesting you bring this up because this was this was uh, quite a unique little 
structure we put in place in this one was that there there is a governor on it. There's a low end and a high end, and um, and so um, we're we're in a situation where there can never not be a program, and we we have set minimum amounts based on uh, the property, and 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 you can't take it over a certain amount if unless both of you agree. You can you can you can have a zero year if you both agree. You can have a a ten million dollar uh, year if you want to do that, but but we put governors on it to make sure that that you know nobody can take advantage of the other in that in that respect, and that these properties will continue to be uh, advanced and uh, and and funded. Okay, okay, and then so then I guess the one other scenario in there, which I guess you've you've avoided by working with someone like ISO, is which we've seen a lot of, where companies format JV whatever whatever structure they want to they call it. Um, to companies that no one's heard of with management teams, no one's heard of who are equally frozen in their ability to access cash. So I think that's what, when I saw this, I was like, wow, that's super attractive. It kind of feels like things will move. And then coming back to my point is, how does the market value this? You're sitting at a 15 million market cap today, sitting around two cents and, you know, being beaten up real good by the market. It's like, um, like a lot of, you know, juniors for the last uh, three years, despite what's going on with with the uh, uranium price. Um, how, what would you point people to so that they can understand what they should be valuing, what you think is important, uh, and what you think is valuable moving forward? I think I, I mean, one of the things that has kept us um, um, strong, I guess, in the past from a from a share price perspective. Is has been the hook. I mean, the Hook Lake project's always been our, our focus because it's backed by Cameco, backed by Arano. They continue to finance it. Therefore, ergo, it's got to be a good project. It's not just me mouthing off. And I think I think that partnership has over the years given given the stock strength. I think um, I think I'm hoping what we're going to see moving forward is that you know because we've been languishing uh, behind over the last six months or so because we haven't been talking about anything. As we put this forward, I'm hoping that we're we're going to see a catch up, um, you know, through the you know through the consolidation we're doing, uh, through the financing we're doing, and through this this partnership of now we have got a different model, a different way of funding the best projects we think in the basin. They're the most advanced. We've got the most elbow room. We've got the best partners, and and we think we think we're going to get a lot of value for it because this is not early stage stuff. This is not moose pasture. This is not, we're dealing, and we are dealing exclusively. Look at all of our joint ventures. We are dealing exclusively with, with large scale organizations that have the balance sheet to not vaporize on us a year or two down the road. So I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm hoping to see some significant movement or, or return, you know, a return to where we think, we think our property should be. I mean, we've, we've always had valuable properties. We've always been able to demonstrate that. You know, again, it becomes the the you know where you get your money to do that. It's the dilution that's been required to to maintain them. I mean, we've maintained these projects for quite a long time in order that we could use them as currency for transactions like this. Um, and and I think I th we're rather pleased with the fact that we've been able to do that. Right. Okay. Yeah. And you may or may not be able to answer the next thing. Yeah, and look, in a sense, from the basis of look, I'd rather have twenty five percent of of something than one hundred percent of nothing, right? I, there is the kind of, so, for the crude uh, description of the model uh, that you're, we're, we're talking about here. But at the same time, um, the potentially there's a kind of fallback to well, they'll take us out. But, you know, I imagine a lot of people think, oh, that's great. I so they're quite acquisitive. Maybe we'll be taken out. I like you and probably most of your shareholders wouldn't want to be taken out at these sorts of levels. So you you want to sort of advance these projects to the point where one, it becomes interesting to take you out, uh, and two, that you're you're getting the full value for what you think your share of those assets is, right? So not a massive burn, you've explained why, in terms of cash burn and therefore diluted financing from your point of view. What else can you do to ensure that you well, are being done properly, not not at these levels? Something else we have done um, in all of our agreements, which has typically wound up being the biggest fight of a negotiating point, is that is that we haven't given the other side a rofer, which means that um, which means that that because once there once something like that is in place, then you've you've pretty much determined who's going to buy you 
if something comes up and 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 you have pretty much assured yourself that you're not going to get a market value for it because nobody's going to make a bid for it. So um, that's been really important to us, and and uh, and we've been able to maintain that much to the the heartache of 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 some of these companies at the end of the day. But they understand that. Um, you know, I'm, again, when we started working, say at Hook Lake, at that point in time, nothing had been discovered out there. Right? There was nothing out there. Um, I mean, there was property. There were instances of, of things happening, but um, you know, neither Arano nor Tamico could pull up budget to move that thing forward, and that's how we got to earn in on it. Well, since that time, um, you know, we've all put a lot of money into it, and and there's been a lot of action out there. So, um, you know, we we are in that position where you know these these things are these terms are very very important to us. Yeah, like I, I, like Chris, I, I think this one, this is the biggest thing that you've done in, in the last couple of years. It's re- really really important. Because, but let me let me come to Canico and Iran now in in, in forum if you want. Um, they had frozen all of their exploration activity. Um, they were not allocating the capital. As one one had hoped, can you? And I we saw then ask from from uh, Tim Getzel recently about they're thinking about basically um, getting back on with the exploration side of things. I don't know what that actually we, translates we're, we're, into. We're, yeah, we're being pulled into some of those conversations because it's quite fantastic. Out. That's what I want to hear. Yeah. Okay, and Arano sure. too, obviously with their with their Arano's trials and well. trials. Arano as well. in uh, Niger, etc. So they are they are actually back at it and talking about how do we do this. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. That's got to be good news for you guys. Oh, That's got to be for sure. News. For sure. So I mean, we do see we do see the next. I mean, how many years can we keep saying this? But we do see the next few years as being rather important in the industries, in the you know, in in the market and in in the uranium sector. And uh, and although you know you don't see it in all of the equities uh, burning burning up steam. It's it's the meetings, the phone calls, the funds, the the the, the you know that that all want a piece of some of this coming into it that we're now uh, being inundated with. You just you can you know from our side of the fence, you start to feel that momentum really building from an investment standpoint and from money you know really wanting to get into this particular particular market. Okay, um, and I'm just going to finish up with a little bit of housekeeping with the 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 tens one roll back. Why? Why? We're, I think we're one of the, if not the last uh, holdout on doing a consolidation. I mean, we've been around for nearly 20 years. We've got 500 million shares outstanding, which kind of does put you in a bit of a rut from, from getting some action on your, on your, your stock price and share price. I mean, at, at two and a half or now three cents, um, you really can't, you know, a, a half, half a cent movement is, is like a 20% change in your market cap, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So, um, so first of all, we're using this as an opportunity really to tighten up and clean up our, our, our cap table. Um, and after, after, uh, the consolidation and the financings, we'll have a little over 60 million shares outstanding at, um, at some astronomical share price. Uh, but, uh, that, that's really why we're doing it now is because we've never seen consolidations work well for anybody that doesn't, you know, eventually watch them drift back down. We think this is a this is an event uh, that that can actually move it in the opposite direction, and it's a good time to do it. Okay, well, like Chris, appreciate your time. Sorry to t- take um, a long time getting through this, but I think it's next. Like, I think it's really, really important um, for you to have done a deal like this. Um, I just want to understand, you know, um, your plans of moving forward, and uh, yeah, I think people watching, reading, looking at this. Um, should be should just have a little dig in themselves and maybe maybe think about uh, where this leads your leads you know pure pure point uh, to and what it does for uh, ISO energy. So stay in touch. We'll see you soon. Very good. Thanks a lot. Well done you. Take care.